I have recently bought a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, the original one. After about a week of usage, I started to really get disappointed by the internal microphones within the camera. Now, that was not actually a surprise to me, as I have done a lot of research before I made the decision to buy a 10-year-old camera. I was actively and passively thinking about acquiring one for about two years, and during that time I have been reading about the flimsy HDMI port, the non-existing battery life, poor microphones, and more. Retrospectively, it now seems to me that I was just looking for a deal with a working SD card. But I digress. Let's get back to the microphone issue. The sound coming from this camera is weak, tinny, and nasal. But it doesn't have to be. I think it actually can be pretty good, depending on the context. Of course. Now, the first fundamental step is to get the gain levels correct before recording anything with the camera. The signal has to be strong to avoid bringing up the preamp noise as much as possible while making things louder in post, but evading the harsh digital clipping of the microphone signal when the signal creeps up over zero decibels full scale. It is possible to control the gain of the internal microphone within the sound menu of the camera. You just need to adjust the microphone gain slider accordingly, so that the signal is strong, but never clips. A week ago I was at a pub, trying out the camera and filming some local music action. I made a crucial mistake, have forgotten to set the gain correctly. Well, actually, I didn't really care about the audio from the camera because I had my trusty Zoom H1N with me, which is actually quite a decent recorder for the price and the size. I have set the levels correctly for the zoom and didn't really pay any attention whatsoever about the audio in camera. And now, here is the resulting audio from the camera. This is a terrible mess of digital clipping convoluted with the weak and tinny sound of the camera itself compared with the Zoom H1n. Well, there is no comparison actually. No wonder people say nasty things about the sound from within the camera. But I actually believe that there is hope for a decent sound from within the camera, with a little bit of love and knowledge massaging here and there with some patience, and you get this. Now you can still hear clipping here, because even after I tried correcting the microphone gain on the camera, I failed to do that properly. And generally, it's so easy to do that that one should not fail. You just need to take a little bit of time and leave some headroom, generally. But again, my excuse was my H1N on record nearby. Despite all that, I do not think it sounds that terrible now, even for a music video. Of course, not exceptional, but not totally unusable, like before. Now, of course, this is quite a special and demanding task, recording live sound. But at least now, you can hear what is actually happening with the bass or drums, which is a very big difference from the raw audio before. I believe for speech like dialogue, this should actually work even better. Now let's jump straight to DaVinci Resolve, and let me show what you need to do to get a usable audio from the camera. Everything that I have done can be reproduced with a free version of DaVinci Resolve. You just need a bundled EQ and a bundled stereo spread plugin from Fairlight Suite. The trick is just to alter the frequency response of the signal to cut and boost required frequencies to balance the sound. Here in Isotope RX you can actually see that there is information recorded up to about 15 kHz, but there is a drastic drop in levels above 4 kHz and an ST peak at around 3.5 kHz. That's why it sounds so anemic. So in Equalizer, you should basically boost the high end, cut the annoying 3.5k, and then boost lows up to about 1k to balance the sound a bit. And that's it. You can also add a stereo spread plugin for some salt and pepper. 
I have actually made presets for this, which sets the audio in the ballpark. I can then adjust further from there if required. Although the equalizer in Fairlight is perfectly capable, I prefer equalizers with a little bit more power and control. Currently I am using Waves F6 dynamic equalizer, and I can manage to get somewhat better results, but the equalizer within Resolve is actually decent. It gets the job done. Now again, the results will depend on the material, but this should actually be pretty good solution when an external microphone is unavailable, broken or out of power. Really hope this helps someone. Cheers!